Hey guys and welcome to Nigrit. In today's video we're going to go over how to make these really cute little chibi kawaii little whales and I love them and they're adorable and they're really quick and easy so this is an amazing uh, beginner project so I'm probably going to go a little bit slower with how my stitches are made and just show you exactly how I do things because the way that I make Gamagurumi my stitch work is a little bit different than um, other people. Not a big deal. I promise it'll you can still do them even if you don't do your stitches the same way that I do them, if you just do uh, normal crocheting, but that's neither here nor there. I made this one, and he looks like a little cupcake because I got this yarn. A lot of this is Vanish Choice. Uh, actually, this one's Vanish Choice. This is a Hobby Lobby yarn that I was using for the I Love That yarn. It's a little bit, like, cushiony -er. I don't know if that's a word. Um, and it it's really cute and they've got like this really pretty speckled yarn that I decided to make a cupcake whale out of because you know why not make a hot pink tummy on it yeah that's pretty much it so I'm going to be using a size uh, D3 Susan Bates cr uh, crochet hook you're also going to need some polyfill which I don't have on hand right this second and you're also going to need a darning needle for putting in all your tails uh, addendum I also forgot that you're going to need some safety eyes um, or whatever you want to use for the eyes, you can just use your normal buttons, sew them on, however you want to do it. I like using safety eyes just because I think that they are the safest bet, uh, other than using like a fabric paint or something. If you're doing something with babies, I'm not sure about the safety of safety eyes. I've seen some things that say that it's okay, but a lot of people also say that fabric paint isn't good because the baby could chew on it, but if you're planning on making this for like a mobile or something and you just want to be safe, I'd probably just stitch something on, but I use safety eyes and this is just what I use. And also these are store-bought ones and not the ones from Wish. Wish does have safety eyes on there and there's a lot of them for really cheap, but I don't know how safe they are. So I generally get the ones from the uh, craft stores like AC Moore or like Hobby Lobby. All right, all right, let's get started. For this, you're going to need to know how to do a basic slip knot, how to work in the round, and how to do a single crochet. I'm going to go about slowly doing this so that you can see. Um, I go over and then I pick up my tail and pull forward. So that makes my nice slip knot. I have videos that go uh, slower and in more detail. Um, right now I'm using a worsted weight um, stitch studio by Nicole. And this one works as a similar weight to the Vanish Choice Worsted that I usually use, but this one's a really cool, nice, it doesn't really show up on the camera that well. It's a nice, like, it's a little bit lighter than this color, so this one reflects a little bit better than what it isn't showing on the camera. So I'm going to make my slip knot. I'm going to place it on my crochet hook the right way this time. There you go. And I'm going to chain two. This is essentially creating my version of a magical ring. I just think that this is easier and I like how that looks. So I go one, wrap again. Notice that I am going from the left to the right. That is what I was talking about with how funny my stitches look. Usually you go from the right to the left. If you do go from the right to the left, the normal traditional right way of doing things, I don't do things the right way, um, then it'll come out the same. So you can just, you essentially just do a chain two. You're going to place six single crochet inside of this one uh, first chain here. You're going to skip the second one here. You're going to go into the first and place six inside that one stitch. So now that I'm in it, I wrap from the left to the right. I find, uh, I, do, I do actually do this for a specific reason. I don't just, oh hey, you learned it the wrong way. Um, wrapping it from the left to the right because I'm dyslexic so I learn everything kind of backwards and I've just now really started learning to cope with that. Um, but no, I actually, I did do it by mistake at first but I actually like how it looks better. So I go in and wrap from the left to the right, pull through, left to the right. I find that my stitches look bubblier looking with my amigurumi so that's why I do that. It's a little bit, a little bit more bumpy which I prefer how that looks with my amigurumi. So that is why I go from the left to the right. Whereas if I went from the right to the left, when I put it in, it comes out looking a little bit flatter. So you can see there, this one's definitely bumpier looking and a little bit more succinct than my um, one that I went from the right to the left. So I do actually have a reason for why I go from the left to the right. 
Alright, so I have two stitches in. I'm going to do a third. And notice the hole is going to start kind of widening. Don't worry, your tail, when you pull on it, will make it all close shut. So four. Try not to split your yarn. Five and six. So now you've kind of got this almost D shape because this is kind of going like straight. And what we're going to want to do next is go into this first spot right here twice. We're going to increase every single one of these stitches. So we're going to go back to our very first single crochet that we made, go inside that stitch, go inside one, go back inside of it, two, and now you're working in the round. So now you're going to go into your next one and place two stitches inside of that. One, two. I would use a slip marker, especially if you're a beginner. Um, I use my tail with all of my um, slip marker needs, basically. I take my tail and I loop it up and through to the outside. Six. How many stitches do I have? I lost count. Oh, and I pull my tail so that way it nice shuts. It one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need two more. So one, two, and then because I'm increasing, one, two. So that gets me to 12 stitches on my um, piece here. I'm going to be increasing to 30 stitches. Right now I have 12. I do this by increasing six stitches each time. So this will be 12, next will be 18 stitches, next will be 24, and the next will be 30. You can tell right here from where I started, this is essentially where I'm at with my um, work here. I crochet, crochet, increase, crochet, 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 increase, and that gets me to where I need to be. So here, I'm going to show you what I meant by my tail. I take my work, this is my last stitch in my round two. I'm going to pull my tail, I looped it around my hand, and I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it right through right there. So that's my beginning of my work. That'll tell me, hey, this is probably where you should stop. And so if you don't like counting constantly, I just use that as my tail. So now we're going to single crochet one, increase single crochet one, increase all the way around. This increases six stitches the next round, like I was saying. So one, increase and if you ever get confused one increase I do have a written pattern of this this is not my original idea these have been on the internet for as long as Amica Rumi has been on the internet but I decided to do my own PDF so that it would be easy to find through my YouTube channel so that will be linked down in the doobly-doo one increase one increase as I split my yarn. One thing I do notice about the Stitch Studio by Nicole is it is very easy to split this yarn. I love all the different color choices that they have because there is, I always find myself limited if I just go off of one increase, if I just go off of um, Vanna's Choice or just Red Heart, I find that I'm limited or even just the Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby has a really extensive, uh, I love that yarn color choice. I will probably pop up some pictures if I can, but it is crazy how much yarn they have. And I find that using all these different versions, just good yarn, good acrylic yarn. I like acrylic versus wool for my amigurumi because it makes them cuddlier. So this is my last stitch, so this is my last increase. And now I should have 18 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 stitches! Woo! I counted right. Big part of amigurumi is math, believe it or not. And knowing what your numbers are and counting. Granted, most people that crochet know that, and so I'm not saying anything new. All right, so I'm 18 stitches now. Um, one, two, increase, one, two, increase is where I'm going for my next stitch. Again, if you're ever confused, I'm going to be popping up a pattern for a written pattern on this, and I'm also going to be putting a link to a PDF that you can download and use anywhere you want down in the doobly doo. So, one.
two, one, two, increase the third stitch, three, four, essentially. That's how I always end up counting it, as I'm like, one, two, three, four, and that makes it so that when I, I don't know, my math, the math in my brain works that way, basically. That's how my brain maths. One, two, three, and increase, four, one, two, three, four, increase, one, two, three, four, Split my yarn so that's my increase sorry I split it and like got only part of it on there ever do that with your stitches where you're like oh hey I'm going to split the yarn so badly that I'm literally only holding on to one string of what the yarn is that drives me crazy when I accidentally do that and I find that when I'm working with smaller needles it's a lot easier to do and I'm working with such a small needle because I don't want any of my polyfill to show through because that drives me crazy to work so hard on an amigurumi piece and then all of a sudden I see all this white polyfill showing through. So I've started using smaller crochet hooks just as a um, way to mitigate that and make it so that the stitches are tighter and so that nothing actually shows through it. This is my last one, so my last increase. I am now at 24 stitches, or at least I should be. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 24. So this is my last increase row that I'm working on now where I'm going to increase, 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 uh, excuse me. I'm going to single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, increase all the way around. So every uh, fourth stitch, I'm going to increase. So I'm now actually going to move my tail so that it's a bit easier. I, you can move it every single time, but I find that just knowing where the places helps me. Um, one, two, three, increase. So, one, two, three, and I'm wrapping up around my whale tail over there. Poor cupcake. Three, oh wait, one, two, three, four, and increase. Sometimes you have to gotta count. Sometimes you lose track. Happens to me all of the time where I have to go back and be like obsessively counting what I'm doing. And I'm like, oh crap, I just counted that. Where did that even go? It's like asking what time it is and then you don't really absorb it. You're like, oh, I counted and did all this work and my brain didn't absorb it. So one, two, three, four, and increase, so five. And because we're increasing six stitches every round, if we increase every fifth stitch, that'll get us to our 30 stitches. That's our goal. One, two, three, four, five, increase. Our fifth increase. One, two, three, four, I split my yarn. Darn it. Sometimes you don't notice until you've gone a little too far. And then you have to go back. I keep feeling like I'm gonna sneeze. Three. I think it's the lights because they're so bright. Four, five. And our last increase set. So one, two, three, four, five, and now I'm going to pull some more yarn out of my little center there. I'm going to take my tail, pull it out from where it was, and pull it back in through that stitch. And now we're going to just single crochet around for four rounds. So we're not going to do any increasing, we're just going to single crochet all the way around until I get to my four rounds being done. So I'll show you what it looks like once that's done. Be right back. All right, so now I have done four rounds. So this is where my marker was, one, two, three, four. And here I'm going to do my tail real quick. And I do this before uh, and not after uh, doing all my slip stitching off and doing my belly. 
This one actually shows drastically what the belly is going to look like um, because it uses less. I have to tuck in. I have to tuck in less um, ends, and I think that it wastes less yarn. So here, I'm going to go in and do a quick little single crochet on my very last stitch, and um, I'm going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And here, I'm going to skip these first two stitches here, uh, the last two chains, four and five chain, and I'm going to go into the third chain. And here you'll notice that I am going from uh, right to left, because I think I like how my double crochets look better when I do it that way, and I'm going to do a quick little double crochet. So one, two. I'm also going to go into the next stitch, and do a half double crochet. It's a little tricky because these like to be really tight. And I like to split yarn during this all the time. And then I'm going to go into the very first chain that I made and I'm going to slip stitch into that. Then I'm going to go into the very first stitch going through only the front loop and I'm going to slip stitch into that and I'm going to chain one two, three, and four, because that first slip stitch counts as my first. So one, two, three, four, five technically, but I'm only going to chain after the slip stitch there. And I'm going to repeat the same, except this time I'm only going to skip the first chain right here. And I'm going to go into this chain, and I'm going to do a double crochet into it. If I could land it at all and not split down the entire darn thing. There we go. I can crochet, I promise. One double crochet right there. I'm gonna go into the next one and do a half double crochet. And I'm gonna slip stitch into the last one. Next, I'm gonna go back into that next stitch right there. And I'm gonna slip stitch right there. All right. Now, time to cut the yarn. Where's my, there it is. You also need scissors, but you know, that kind of goes without saying. So here, I'm going to pull the tail through and into the middle, like so that it's going towards the inside. And I kind of just tuck it on the inside here. Now you have all these stitches and what we're going to do next is we're going to go through the back loop only. We're not going to go through the front loop like we did for all of our other amigurumi. We're just going to go through our back loop for this, and we're going to need some white yarn. Be right back. All right, so now I have my white yarn. I'm using I Love This Yarn by Hobby Lobby, and I just pulled out a ton of it, so, you know, that's not great. I'm going to go through, you're gonna notice all your back loops that there are some right behind your tail. I'm going to pick up the very center one, the one right between your tails, and I'm going to loop my yarn and do a chain one. Next, I'm going to go through the back loop. These are all back loops, mind you, and I'm going to single crochet. You're going to want to pick up all 30 of these stitches by going through the back loop of each one of these. So this is what makes the nice little ridge, is you're making a ridge right here. So I'm going to go through there and pull through. Not go through here and go through this loop, the back loop. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as I split yarn again. This is really easy to split. It's one thing that I don't like about it. 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, we're getting close, 22, 23, 24, 
26, 27, 28, 29, going through here. And our 30th stitch is going to be the very right stitch right here to the right of the that right there. So as long as you count, you've got, I'd like to keep all my tails tucked in there, we're going to count 30 stitches. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, that is our 30th. And here, we're going to just do some decreases. We're going to do the exact inverse of how we made our increases. So we're going to go into this first one. One, two, three. And instead of increasing on our fourth stitch like we did last time, we're going to take our fourth and fifth and double crochet those two stitches together. I'll show you how I do that again. So one, two, three. And now we're going to take this fourth stitch, pull through, and our fifth stitch, pull through. And we're gonna put both of those together with one little loop there. This is called an invisible decrease. So one, two, or single crochet, two together. Three, four, and five again. Put in our, keep getting out of focus. Four, and five, one, two, Four, five, together. One. We got two more. Three, four, and five together. And I finally used to pull that yarn. One, two. And now we're under the tail, four, and five. All right, so here is where I like to add the eyes. The eyes are usually 10 stitches apart from each other from the center. So here's what I do to kind of make sure that they are centered. First, I take that stupid tail out. I don't need that there anymore, and I can just tuck it right inside of the body. You'll notice that my body is starting to become a hole of tails because I just have so many tails there. Um, in here, I have the tail, I center it as best I can, I take my crochet hook, and I push it through the center. And so now I've got this nice marker for where my center is. And I'm gonna take my safety eyes, like I said earlier. Come on, don't go flailing that way. And we're gonna count. So this split between these two. So one, two, three, four, five stitches. Right there, I'm gonna go above that to the row right before my stitches end. And I'm gonna put that right in, and I'm gonna take my backer and push it onto it. Right there. I try not to push too hard because I notice that if I push too hard, it winds up looking like it's gonna go through the fabric. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna go right there, push it right through. And I'm gonna put my little marker guy right there. And I pushed him a little too firm, but they both look right about right. It's not a perfect science. I'm sure it is, because you know it's crafting, but still. I liked how they all look a little bit different. So now we're gonna go back, now that we've added our eyes, and we're going to go one, two and not do our third stitch. Or we do, a, we do our third stitch, but we're gonna go, you'll see the decrease is right there. And we're gonna go three, four, decrease. One, two, three, four, decrease. One, it gets really quick here. Two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. You notice how quickly these rows start to go because you're doing way less stitches each time. Two, 
three and four, and then I only have one more now. One, two, three, four. I'm really excited about making these because I'm actually going to be doing a nice little mobile for a uh, baby in my life. Not mine, but a friend's. So I'm really excited about making a little nautical themed mobile. And I might post a thing on that. I might just post it on my Patreon. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do like a whole pattern and a whole thing on how I'm doing that. I probably will. If you comment down below, let me know if you're interested in that because I am very excited about being able to make this mobile. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do the metal part, but I'm like the, the circular part that you need at the very top of a mobile that makes it, you know, circular and like a mobile. And so here where is where I usually stuff. So I'll be right back. All right, so here I'm going to just take my pieces and honestly stuffing is always just kind of like the worst part of amigurumi for me because I can never feel like I'm actually like doing it right. The first part that I stuff is I push it towards the eyes so that I can not feel like I'm just poking myself. I know I'm not gonna need this much fluff, but you don't really need a lot when it comes to this. I'm gonna take this and take my yarn right there. There we go. And honestly, it's just kind of like a balancing act. Like, oh, hey, this feels right. I like to kind of roll it around on the inside and then push it in places. I don't know how to describe it. It really is not an easy thing to describe. Um, so there, yeah, I just keep kind of like pushing and rolling while it's in there. Um, I will stuff more as I get to the um, bottom and as I get to the just once I decrease more, there we can put it more towards the tail because I leave kind of this pocket on the inside and then when I decrease it to like only six stitches, really like nine, then I end up like pushing more into it because I can't work it and decrease it with it being too stuffed because then it just becomes too cumbersome. So yeah, that's what I'm going to stuff for now and then now I'm going to do a little bit more, a little bit more decreasing becomes a little bit more time consuming. So here I'm gonna do my single crochet one and then decrease because I'm decreasing six stitches this round. Single crochet one for this round and then decrease. Where she has a single crochet two together. Single crochet one, decrease. And I try really hard not to get polyfill in my needle because otherwise I end up with polyfill in my stitch and that's just a pain in the butt to deal with. And so I get way too far high up on my thing. I always tend to like migrate up and up and up and I don't mean to. I'm sorry about that. So there we go. One. There we go. As it gets circular, I'm also like having a harder time getting it to focus on the stitches. And then I decrease this one. One stitch. And then decrease. It's my last decrease because I'm back to my tail. My tail becomes my stitch marker at that point because I go right behind it. And now I'm going to decrease every single stitch. So I go one. This is my first decrease. I'm going to decrease six times. This is my last decrease row. Two. This is my third decrease. And around here I like to make sure that all my stuffing is done. So I've got about nine stitches left. Nine to ten ish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was right! Yay! And I get really small and I start balling them. And I notice where my stuffing needs to be done. So right there in that center. That definitely needed some stuffing. And I'm going to roll it and ball it. And I still have this huge ball that my finger can hold, that my finger can go right and fit into. So I don't want that for my amigurumi. I want to get it all nice and finished. So there, I kind of roll the last bit right there and I roll it underneath the stitches and then I have three more decreases to get done. And I'll show you how I finish off. So one, my darning, there's my darning needle. It's like, where'd it go? One, 
so this is four actually, five, because I need to do six, five, and the sixth stitch, you can choose to either decrease or you could do what I do, which is I skip that last stitch and then I single crochet slip st into that, uh, I slip stitch into that single crochet and then I do a quick little chain. And now where did those scissors go? Oh, I buried them under polyfill. Ha! Ah. And so now you'll notice that you still have a good sizable hole. Here's where your darning needle comes in handy. And this is the way that I make seamless bottoms for my little guys. I fold over my edge here. I put my tail into a darning needle. I then go into, from the front, going out the back of the stitch, I pull through. From the inside, going out, I pull through two. I repeat that all the way around. Three, four, again, going from the inside out, five, six, and then I go back inside and I go underneath where this big kind of hole is, and I pull, and then I pull it tight. That closes up all those stitches seamlessly. Now I take my tail and go back through that hole, and I only go through. One of my big things with amigurumi is if I took this teal yarn and I went through the white, it would show right through, and I don't want that. So I'm going to do the same thing with my white, because it would show right through the teal. So I'm going to only go through the white stitches, because if there's any kind of like residual tail after I pull on it a little bit and then cut it, then it will not show, because I'm not perfect, heaven knows. So I'm going to move all my polyfill, and now I'm going to work on my little whale fins, and that's all she wrote for my whale. So what I do is I balance somewhere between my eyeball and my tail. It's not exactly, usually I go about four stitches. I go into that front loop that is exposed. I'm going to go back to my Stitch Studio by Nicole blue sea foam green yarn, my main yarn, my main color, and I'm going to make a long enough tail that I can tuck. I'm going to wrap my yarn around and chain one, and then I'm going to put four single crochet on the inside of that same loop. I'm going into the same loop each time. So one, going back inside the loop, two, going back inside the loop, three, going back inside the loop four. You'll notice that there's a small hole. Don't worry, when you tuck in your tails, it'll become barely visible. I'm gonna go back inside that same loop and do a quick little slip stitch. Now we're gonna repeat this for the other side. I'm gonna cut my tail. There we go. You'll notice that you've got two little tails right here. So now we're gonna go back to the other side where our other little guy needs to go. We're gonna go back and go into the center between our eyeball and our tail. I'm gonna make a nice decent tail that can be tucked in, but not too long because I don't need it that long. I'm gonna repeat. So I'm going to go and chain one, single crochet four inside all of that same loop. Two, three, four, and then I do a quick little slip stitch back inside of my tail, pull it through, just let it loose, and here I'm just going to tuck in all of my tails. So here I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to go out from underneath my stitch, and kind of go up the top as I whack my camera, jeez. Take my other tail, I don't cut until I get all of my tails done, because then I can get it all done at once. I'm going to go underneath the stitch, kind of like so. So I go underneath that stitch going up the top, pull it so it's not super tight. I don't try to like pull it so hard that it's like gonna pull the stitch inside of itself, I guess. So now I'm gonna repeat that. Going underneath, going from above, just tucking in my tails. And once that's done, my little whale's done. He's like a super easy project and I adore him and I love him so much. And I will hopefully be posting, as I keep hitting my 
freaking lens. See, if you pull too tight, then you wind up with a wonky little fin there. But if you pull just tight enough, you can always kind of like wiggle that back out. So here I've got all these tails. A little all over the place tonight. Cut my tail. I just upgraded all of the tiers on my Patreon. So if you're interested in Patreon, I have some awesome awards there, including free patterns that are usually for sale. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, I'm also going to be coming out with a whole line of new Amigurumi big dolls and medium dolls that I'm calling Lunas. And I'm super pumped about that. So be on the lookout for that. I might post some pictures on my Instagram and on all that stuff. If you're interested in seeing some of them, I'm going to be coming out with a unicorn and a kitty and, um, uh, I've got a bear, and I'm going to be coming out with a mermaid, and all all of these are going to be basically the same size, and they're all going to have their own clothes sets that they can be done with it, so be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be posting pictures on my Instagram and on Patreon and all that good stuff, and be sure to stay focused on our community board, because I've actually discovered what a community board is, and I can actually do stuff with it. Like, hey, what do you guys actually want to see? Like, post in the comments. Like, I love interactions, and I love reading all the comments. I read all of them. So if that's something you're interested in, just message me. Also, I'm on Ravelry, so if you ever feel like messaging me on there and you need help, go there, go email me. I love to help and I love figuring out uh, crafty things and talking to people about crafts. It's kind of my favorite thing. So that's my whale and he is all done. If you need help, there's a written pattern down in the doobly-doo. I've said that probably three times now. And do all the YouTube things. You, this is not your first day on YouTube, so... You probably know all about all the things. I have all of them. All the social media stuff. I'm on all of it. Contact me. Alright, until next time guys. Bye! Bye.